My name is Jennifer Monarch McGuire, and I am the 4-H Youth Development Educator in Dubois County. And today we're going to be talking about scholarships and how 4-H members, um, what they can do to help earn a 4-H scholarship. As you can see from this opening slide, um, the main thing that 4-H members strive to learn in 4-H is life skills. And so when applying for all these scholarships that you can have the opportunity to earn in 4-H, the goal is to show how you learned life skills through 4-H. And we're going to go in a little bit more depth into all the scholarships and how you can best do that. Um, so just a little brief introduction about life skills and, and a little showcase of um, what might be one and what projects and stuff to think about. So um, on this side you'll see activities and we have different types of activities that one might be involved in in 4-H. Maybe a committee, um, an officer role of some kind, maybe a service project, and then on the side is the type of skill that one learns from doing that activity. So if you're on a committee or maybe an officer of some kind then you're going to learn things like leadership, teamwork, community service or citizenship. So that's going to be the life skill that goes with that role. Um, for projects, as we know, projects is a big focus in 4-H. And so a lot of kids have all kinds of projects they take. So one might be animals, arts and crafts. So some of the things of life skills that go along with that, that we hope you learn by doing these projects, would be maybe be responsibility, time management, creativity, planning. There's lots more, but the goal is to think about how what you do relates to a life skill. Finally, there's also activities, trips, um, events that um, people can participate in with 4-H as well. So judging teams, demonstrations and clubs, share the fun but not called that anymore, 4-H Performing Arts Festival, those type of things um, you can learn things from as well. So pull anything that might relate to 4-H at all and think about what life skills that you learned through that. Finally, at the bottom, you can see junior leaders. Junior leaders are going to be huge, so if you are a junior leader, I would emphasize that and what you are learning from junior leaders. So now we're going to go brief overview of well, the 4-H scholarships and the two national trips that you also need to apply for um, that are competitive and really um, involve a very similar application. So this is a little grid outline. Um, this is all part of my presentation, but at any point, if you would like to request these um, documents to have paper copies of, I'd be happy to send them out. Feel free to email or contact the office and we'll, we would be happy to send this stuff out to you. Um, so you can see the national trips that are available are National 4-H Conference and then National 4-H Congress. Both of these are competitive trips and not everyone can go to them from the entire state. So um, they would, you know, judge between who can, who is chosen and why. Um, so you can see kind of this breakdown, everything you might need um, to determine whether you can go um, try to earn that trip. Uh, and they kind of break it down on, on how it's judged. And again, this is actually very similar to the regular scholarship applications as well. And now here's scholarships. So we have four different types of scholarships. And today we're really going to be focusing on two of them, but I'll go ahead and go over all of them. And if you have specific questions that I do not answer in this presentation, again, you can always contact the office. I'd be happy to go through that. So the 4-H Foundation Scholarship is for seniors. So only people in grade 12 can apply for this. You do not have necessarily have to be in 4-H for a certain number of years to apply for this, but as you, you have to be in grade 12. Um, and then there is a form that you complete that has demographics information it can be downloaded from the indiana 4-h website or you can contact our office we can get that form to you um, and i will also try to be sending those forms out to seniors so that they all have them and again the 4-h record it breaks down here the which questions are worth more um, the last three questions um, are worth a decent amount it's a 45 percent and they are all um, essay type questions. So those are the ones you're going to be able to um, make the most difference in um, how you answer the question. The first three and four are all basically kind of what you have done in 4-H. So just make sure you think about everything that you have done, activities, trips, everything, projects, all of it, and include it in that 4-H record. And then we also have a 4-H horticulture scholarship. This is grade 12 also. 
And this is really only for people who plan on going to Purdue in horticulture or landscaping. So that is a very limited number, but this the odds of getting this scholarship, if that is where you plan to go, would be higher since not as many kids are eligible to apply for this one. If you have specific questions about this one, contact our office. We will not go into a great, de um, great detail during this presentation. The 4-H Club Scholarship, this is for members um, for at least four um, that are enrolling in Purdue, whether they're transferring or um, going in as a freshman and um, going into the College of Agriculture. And so this, again, is, is kind of specific. Um, and then this is the only one where really they base it on um, your scholastic achievement and financial need. The other scholarships, it's based entirely on your 4-H record. And then finally, um, and again, this is the one we'll probably be spending the most amount of time on because it's, it's, there's the most required to complete the application, and that is the Accomplishment Scholarship. Now, you can apply for this as young as 10th grade. So um, 10, you can really apply for this for four different years if you choose to. So 10th, 11th, 12th, and your first year in college. So you have four chances to really apply for this scholarship. And what is required for this scholarship is a one-page form, a cover page, and a two-page resume. And we'll go into detail of what's going to make your resume stick out and get noticed by the judging committee. So this is just a little brief view of what the um, page looks like. This is just a demographics page. Uh, it should be pretty easy to fill out. Just make sure none, nothing on it is a mistake. Um, the extension area might be something to pay attention to. Um, not everyone realizes, but we are in extension area 3 in Dubois County. So that would be make sure you put the right extension area there. And then this is the breakdown. Again, questions 1 three, through um, 3 are, are basically what projects you've taken, events you've done, leadership positions that you've held. So it's really just going to be about um, including that information. Uh, if you have um, projects that you have done for several years, then I would put those first. So if you've done any for 10 years, put those on top. Um, and then uh, make sure that they get noticed. And then, um, and then you kind of go down from there. So I would not be putting the one-year projects on top um, because you don't necessarily want the most emphasis put on that. Same kind of goes with everything else. The the one you think you um, is most impressive, put that so it gets noticed. And then as you can see, the last three questions at the bottom are, are, are essay type questions. It mentions a three page maximum, so you cannot go over three pages. Um, but most people don't. I would at least strive to get to two pages. I've seen a lot of applications that are barely over one. And I can guarantee, based on a lot of the scholarships applications that you see as part of the judging committee, those are not going to have enough detail to really get um, get a, lot, a scholarship. Um, so it's really important to make sure you're really explaining what all you've done and not just what roles you've held. You have to explain what you did and really go into detail of how you made an impact in 4-H. Again, we're not going to go a lot into detail of the national trips, but if you do have specific questions about those, um, feel free to contact the office and I can get more information for you. Um, but we'll be spending more time today on scholarships. So the accomplishment resume for scholarships. Again, we've got the demographics page, um, but we've got some few examples here. So again, this one has a cover page. So the cover page is actually worth less than the resume. But usually when the judging committee looks at these, they read the cover letter first. So you do want it to be somewhat um, noticeable, inter interesting, um, get catch their attention so they're want going to want to go and look at their resume. This is really the format of most job applications in the future, too. So a cover page is supposed to entice people to read your resume. So um, And if you can see in this example, they have bolded. Um, important life skills. They have three in here, so that's a good number to focus on. Teaching, teamwork, and problem solving. Uh, if you would like um, a larger, I have printouts of, of this slideshow so you can read this cover letter and see kind of what you should be striving for when, you, when doing it. Um, this is another example of a resume structure. Bullets are a great way um, to structure a resume. Um, it's really important, though, with those bullets that you include important um, verbs. 
the strong, powerful verbs, not just like helped. Helped is a common word. So maybe try to use something a little stronger than that. If you can see here, they use words like serve, um, inspired, participated, represented, um, planned, budgeted, utilized. So think about power verbs, and we actually will have a list later on this presentation that you can utilize when making the, the bullet points. So in a resume structure like this, every bullet is going to start with that power verb. And remember that this is for the accomplishment scholarship. The um, resume and cover letter are not necessary for the senior scholarship. So the categories for accomplishment. So accomplishment is all based on a specific area that you've done a lot of work in. So maybe you've spent a lot of time with animals throughout 4-H or citizenship, communications, things like that. Then that is where you would want to spend your time applying for accomplishment scholarship. There is a limit to three, so if you think you've done a lot in 4-H and you can apply for multiple areas here, you can only do three, and you would need to apply for three separate applications. You need to submit three to do that. Bottom, you'll see three premier. Um, these are all for people who have already previously won an accomplishment scholarship, and then they can apply again, but only in those three categories. So for most people, they're not going to be eligible for the premier scholarships. Those are only for people who have already won the accomplishment. So here is the overview of animal science. So if you are involved in any of these projects, then animal science would probably be the area you would want to apply for an accomplishment scholarship. So projects include beef, foods, goat, poultry, rabbit, sheep, swine, veterinary science. So all animal related. And again, people like to focus on projects, but if you have done activities of any kind, then that would be that would be a good thing to include. I know livestock judging is very big in Du Bois County, so if you've done a lot with livestock judging, then this is a good one to apply for. Um, they've got food science workshops. Um, if you've done any demonstrations, um, if you've helped with food and ag day, any of those things you can include in, um, uh, in your animal science application. And then there's different types of animal science since animal science is such a big category. So they have um, more of the um, veterinary type um, animals, cat, dog, um, and then um, they have activities here too. So again, just, just look over the, act, the categories to see which one you have the most things you've done in to decide what you, um, what you would be most likely to want to apply for. Citizenship. So citizenship does not have as many projects. There's genealogy, government, junior leaders, and personality, but they have a lot of activities. So if you think about citizenship, being involved in the community, community service, that is all um, very community activity oriented. So there's a lot of activities. If you've gone on trips, that is a huge thing to emphasize, and that would, might help you if you applied for this category. Communication. So um, if you have been in verbal communications, public speaking, this would be a good one to go to, especially if you've done it multiple years. And then, again, anything where you might have used your public speaking skills would be a good one to do. So um, there's lots of different trips, state junior leader conference where you're using those skills, um, and, you know, different ones where you're performing for other people, communicating in some way, shape, or form. Even if it's maybe written communication, we do have a project in Du Bois County um, for creative writing. So this would be a, a fall under that category as well. Engineering and technology. So there are several um, projects that would fall under here, aerospace, tractor, uh, electric, computer. So just take a look, see if any of these apply for you. Wood science is one that I don't always traditionally think of when I think of this category, but it does fall under here. So you are building engineering, um, so that does fall under this category. And then if you look at all the activities that you could do as well, that you could fall under. Public speaking, you're going to see very often because it's going to fall under really every category. So if you have public speaking experience related to 4-H, emphasize that a lot in your applications. It will all only help you. It cannot hurt you. Then we have a healthy living category, or food and nutrition science. So if you do foods a lot, that this would be a good one to, to do. Um, and then you can see kind of all the categories. It's a very broad category, you know, from foods to photography. 
um, safety, sewing, shooting sports, um, all of those kind of things. And again, all you see all your activities that could be related to that. Uh, again, you're going to see your public speaking. So that one is going to be emphasized time and time again. Uh, if you are a younger 4-H member, um, that's something to think about. If you really would like to earn a scholarship or really help build your resume, participating in those public speaking events or doing demonstrations is going to help build your resume, as well as any trips or workshops that you can attend. Leadership development is also its own category. So communications hit on again here. Um, a lot of the public speaking projects, junior leadership is, is also big. Um, and then you can see all the different trips that would, would fall under here as well. So in the applications, they are going to have a, a section for projects and activities. So these are the types of things you're going to put in there. Then they have plant and environmental science. Lots of, lots of projects that fall under here. So if you do a lot of the science projects, even if you do one a lot, even if you can't, don't only really have one project, but you've done it like 10 years, then this would still be a good one to apply for. Um, just remember that in the bottom section, you need to really explain what you learned, all the life skills, and emphasize that. Because um, you, even if you haven't had a variety of projects, being really strong in one will also um, bode well for you. And then the purveyor categories, achievement, citizenship, or community service, and leadership. So this, again, is for people who have already won and accomplished a scholarship before, and they are applying again. So you can kind of see um, here, this is how many scholarships were submitted in 2016. There's quite a few. So total for accomplishment scholarship is 442. And then total that were awarded was 33. So you can see the percentages and how many, you know, really win in the end. So if you're going to get noticed out of all these scholarships, you really have to work hard to make sure that your, your um, application, your resume, your cover letter, they sound really good and that you spent some time on them. Some people spend about 20 minutes on the scholarship application they submit. That's probably not enough time if you really want to earn a scholarship. Okay, so here is a list of life skills. Again, some people think they know what a life skill is and they really don't. So it's important to look over this list and think about which ones that would apply to you and use ones that come from this list. To make sure that you are writing about what they are looking for uh, and again don't try to think push ones that you think they want to hear pick ones that really apply to you so that you can really emphasize and give examples of how you use that so it doesn't help to just say I do a lot of record keeping because I'm a secretary and just end it there because there are lots of kids across the state of Indiana who do that so what is makes you different? What all have you done? Like, and really emphasize what you do. A uh, one line about being a secretary is, is not enough. And again, it's about what you learned. It's not just about holding the title. So we do have in the office some resume worksheets that I'd be happy to send out that can kind of help guide you through creating your resume. Uh, it's got the life skills listed on the left side and then the result of what happened. A lot of times we like to list our skills and then not what happened as a result. So that's really important. The result piece often gets missed. And a really good thing to think about is numbers. If you can include a number in your result, try to. Um, this year we did a mini 4-H day camp. Um, junior leaders helped a lot with that. So if you are a junior leader who helped with that, then you might want to mention how many kids participated in the mini 4-H day camp. I believe it's right around 30 kids. So you can say that I gave a tour to 30 kids and we taught them how to do this. Uh, so that would be a way to really show what, you, what impact that you made um, from that activity. So um, again, this is um, some more examples of that kind of thing. So a mini workshop, 30 mini 4-Hers learn to make fruit, kebabs, and ice cream. So that is your result from what the activity was. 12 4-Hers learn to bake cookies. So you're saying how many, who it was, and then what they did and learned. Uh, be specific because that's what's going to get you further in the judging process. And um, we like to call um, something in the resume is a wow statement, something that really sticks out, really makes them remember. 
So we really, really want to turn your examples into wow statements um, throughout your thing. So um, whenever under each category in your resume, under each life skill, you're going to want to have about five bullet points or examples. The first bullet points can be about projects that you've done, and then the others should be about other 4-H things. Uh, and then last, if you have school or home, be related. You can pull things from school or home, but it always helps to say how 4-H is related to them. So some people might be in a public speaking project, but they learn skills that they use in school. So you can do that and say that I took it away from what I learned in in 4-H, and that's great. So, But you're pulling it all back to 4-H and what 4-H has done and taught you. So creating wow, wow statements. So a lot of times we see very simple um, sentences in a scholarship application might look like under activity. Participated in Super Saturday. Brought my project from last year. That's wonderful, but that doesn't tell me a lot of what you did. Um, it doesn't show very much at all. Um, but you could really do the same thing and say it in a much more powerful way. So the wow statement here would be, recruited potential 4-Hers by presenting detailed information on the foods project at the county Super Saturday 4-H promotional event. This event was attended by 150 people, which included about 85 potential 4-Hers. So you see how it's really saying the same thing, but in a much more powerful way and showing how you're making an impact. That's what they're looking for. So that is what you're going to have to think about. Uh, sometimes it's just a matter of about sitting down, trying to think of how can I make this a more powerful statement. Next example would be fed my animals daily. So the life skill here is time management. So again, you were showing that you are doing something. But a lot of people might say that I fed my animals daily. So how can we make that more powerful? So the wow statement would be executed the daily routine of feeding, grooming, and exercising my own horses as well as maintaining clean skull. The health of my horses is extremely important to me and these activities help me keep them at their best. So it's again, it's saying the same thing but in a much more powerful way that shows that you took time to do the scholarship application and that you are making an impact on someone or something. Here it would be the horses that you take care of and that you are learning the life skills needed to take care of horses in the future. So here are some more examples. So junior leaders, again, a huge one. A lot of junior leaders apply for these things. So participated in a junior leader service project, and the life skill would be citizenship. So how can we make that a wow statement? Networked with junior leaders, the Delphi churches, and other civic groups to help approximately 125 needy families select gifts for their children at the annual toy store. So say what your community service project is and how it's making an impact. I, I've seen several times like um, helps break leaves for community service projects. Um, but what impact did you make? Well, helps an elderly family who can't break their own leaves. Um, and so explain why, why what you did was so important. Um, activity, coordinated for each in school activities and your skill is time management. So how can we make that a powerful statement? Uh, your wow statement, scheduled events for 4-H, school, FFA, volunteer work, part-time jobs, and homework while maintaining an AD average. Again, it's saying the similar things, but it's going into detail about what all you did. Some people forget that you are doing all this while maintaining good grades in school. So say that, uh, and it'll look a whole lot better to the scholarship judging committee. So for the resume part, um, these are some suggestions. Uh, it mentions, you know, your name, address, phone number at the top. That's usually how you would write a resume and also a cover letter that should put out. Um, your skills should stand out. You can bold them. You can um, do separate paragraphs for one skill. Um, your resume can be designed like that as well. Just somehow, way, some way, shape, or form, make your life skills stand out because that's what you're writing. The font needs to be readable, so I would suggest the 12 point font um, and don't make your resume too long. So it only can be two pages. Even if you've done tons of stuff, pick the most important things, the things that show the most impact, and put those on there.
your goals when you have two you should include a short-term and a long-term goal and those also need to be specific as well um, a lot of times we like to use very broad goals uh, but that doesn't show a lot of thought so um, be specific on your goal make it one that can really be measured down the line um, so awards keep those to a minimum we uh, only want project related don't just put anything and everything you've ever gotten in your life because that's not going to mean anything um, to them and do remember that the review team wants to know what you learned and not what you earned <coughs> and um, when putting your skills um, put your strongest ones first and your second strongest ones last and then the weakest ones in the middle because people usually don't when they're glancing over resumes, the things in the middle tend to get lost. So put your strongest ones first and your second strongest ones last. So this is a good example of power verbs and how they're bolded. So they're emphasizing their power verbs in each sentence. And you can see, so they analyzed, instructed, created, recruited, tutored. All very powerful verbs that show exactly what you're doing and as you can look through this you can also see there are numbers in there um, so that would be good to emphasize this is a good example of goals and then honors so they've got a long-term goal and a short-term goal and then they've also got honors that are all related to the project or the the category they're applying for so they are all foods related awards so this is a bad example of power verbs because, well, just upon looking, you can't really see them. And I know everyone thinks that every um, person on the committee is going to spend hour looking at mine. Well, they're not. They have a ton of resumes and cover letters and things to look at. So they're not going to. They're going to be reading these things quickly. So if they can't notice your big ideas right away, then you're probably not going to be one that's chosen someone else who has focused their time and energy on emphasizing those things are the ones that are going to um, be noticed. Now this is one is a bad example because they have way too many honors. And as you can see, they include anything and everything, and not all of them are relevant to what the thing is about. So this one looks like, you know, they're this is probably an engineering award, so they were only going to want to include things that are engineering related. As you can see, there are some in here, but they get unnoticed because of everything else that's there. This one is a bad example because there are typos and there's nothing wow about it. There's nothing that's going to make this one stand out. Uh, it's really important to have someone proofread your work. That can be us in the extension office, can be your English teacher. It just needs to be someone and maybe do it a couple times because it is so easy when you're typing to make a typo and an error that when you read over again that you don't see. And then again, try to make it wow. Um, make it seem like, you know, show them how much you're doing. As you can see here, there's not a lot of numbers here. So um, if you can show your impact in some way, that would be the way to make your statements wow. So the, for the cover letter, um, it is the goal of this is to introduce you to the reader. Um, you must mention three life skills from your resume. Again, it's to entice you to read the resume. Don't repeat your examples and don't use more than that. Pick three, the three big ones that you have stuff to write about and put those in your cover letter. And, as, and, and you need to catch interest because again, you're gonna, this is what's gonna make them want to read your resume. This is gonna make them stick out, you stick out in their brain when they go back to review the 20 something that they went through that day. So, Keep that in mind when you're writing it. So here are some examples of some catchy ones. So this one has a catch intro. Starts with sheet, real big, um, exclamation point, and asks some follow-up questions. So that's kind of a way to catch their interest from the back. Again, if you'd like printouts of this so you can, can take time to read this stuff, then by all means contact me and I will be happy to send this to you. Uh, then this is also another one that has a catchy intro. Again, a, a thing, if, if you're not super creative, just simply start asking them questions and then answering the questions as you go through. Your, your paragraphs can be answering that question you started off. Uh, so um, something that grabs our interest. This one is all about just being warm and fuzzy. As you can see, they kind of started the theme and repeated it. 
Uh, and um, it was just a really good one. Um, so you can take time to read this one and just get an idea of some things that might make your cover letter a little bit more noticeable. Um, this one, as you can see, bolded, bolded their life skills. So that's a great thing to do. Um, bold the life skills that you want them to notice. If they didn't bold that, you probably wouldn't see them. And then, you know, it would be a lot harder for, for them to find it. So um, the demographics page, which we showed you earlier, um, this page is important, but it's not judged. Um, just make sure that there are no spelling errors, because if you do win, they do use this to introduce you in, on different things. So you want to make sure everything in that is right. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, when listing projects, list your main projects first, especially those related to the scholarship. Um, so always put your most relevant information first. <laughs> So the evaluation process. So when the scholarships get up to the committees and they see them, well, what, who, who are these people? So there's a team of about four to six people, educators, who score the applications in the project category. Uh, during the first round, each of the applications is worth 20 points. The resume is worth twice as much as the cover letter. So um, again, be sure to spend time on that resume. And it's good to know the point values, but that does not mean blow off the cover letter. They read that first, so um, it should be something to catch their attention. And then for each category, five or more will be invited um, to participate in the interview. And then the, from the interview, you will then be chosen to receive a scholarship. So the accomplishment scholarship, there are really two phases to that process. So for the senior one, it's a little different. They just go through and they pick one based on how much money they have. And those are all chosen based on area. So like area three, which is where Dubois County is, is um, given so much money. And then that from that money, they give divvy out the scholarships to the best application um, of the bunch. And then sometimes different counties will donate money to go to exclusively to their county. Uh, but if you really want to, um, you know, earn guarantee that you earn a scholarship, you need to make sure that your scholarship application stands out. So. All of these tips that we've been mentioning so far are important to know, too. Uh, the senior scholarship does not require a cover letter and a resume, but those power verbs, those wow statements, all need to be in there as well. It uh, needs to look like you spent time on it and that you have done a lot, um, and you need to show that in your, res uh, in your application. So this is a score sheet that they'll go through. So and again, this is the scholar um, the accomplishment scholarship score sheet. So because they have a cover letter, a resume, and then the interview. So they'll judge the interview and things like that. If you need help interviewing once you get to that stage, again, come talk to us. We'll be happy to go through that and and help you with the public speaking part of, of this process. Um, this is another. Um, application evaluation so this is where they can leave comments so if this is again remember the accomplishment scholarship you can apply for multiple years so if this if this is your first year applying and you don't get it well remember they are going to send this feedback home with you so read it you know take it in and, and then adjust for next time and make sure you correct what they ask you to do uh, once you get to the interview portion um, it's about 10 minutes per interview um, and they give about a two to three minute speech, answer questions for about three to four minutes. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail of this. Um, it is harder to get to the interview stage. But if you do, even if you don't win the scholarship, you should be very proud because you saw the numbers and how many people get to this point of it. Uh, but it, it, when you, if you get to this point, again, contact us. We'll work with you. We'll do what we can to help you get that scholarship. Um, this time, this time frame is not exactly accurate for Dubois County. Um, the main thing to emphasize here is January 25th. That is when scholarships are due online. Um, and remember that you do need to be active in 4-H online to submit a scholarship. So don't wait till January 15th and then pay with the check and then we have to send it to the state and get approved. There's a chance it might not be finalized by January 25th. So if you want to make sure that you are active in the system, by the time you've got to submit that, I would I would enroll today, now, as soon as you can. And that way you can guarantee that you will be active in time to submit your application. So just in general, things the committee like. Remember this. So heartwarming stories. 
So even if you don't have a ton of numbers, if you can um, include a heartwarming 4-H story and evidence of your personal learning in there, um, do that. Um, they like that. And that's what's going to keep them reading. Evidence that you have learned a skill in 4-H. So again, talking about what 4-H has done for you and what it has taught you. Uh, state and national trips and awards combined with evidence of learning. So if you've gone on any trips, um, show, you know, write down what you all you learned from those trips and, and, and bring, bring up all of those things and really use that to your advantage. If you are still a younger 4-H member, take, go on some trips, go to camp, do camp counselors, do those things that are going to build your resume and build your application because that's how you're going to earn this. If you haven't done anything and you have nothing to pull from, it's going to be very hard to earn a scholarship. Um, and a resume and a cover letter that is very specific to the project category. So, you know, if you're applying for a certain category, I've seen this happen where, you know, they're applying in engineering, but then most of what they talk about has nothing to do with those projects. So make sure that you're applying for the correct category and the examples that you're using in the, your resume and cover letter are very specific to that category. So the committee does not like, so the committee does not like just to put a list of awards you've won um, and a focus on winning. Because uh, 4-H, again, our mission does not say kids will win a bunch of stuff. It says kids will learn life skills. That's our goal in 4-H is to teach kids life skills. So emphasize what you've learned, what life skills that you have built, how 4-H has made a difference in your life. Um, the same resume, they want to see the same resume used over and over. So hypothetically, you apply for three, they want to see the same resume over and over. You're going to need to adjust for the category you're applying for. And then list what you have done without stating what you, what you learned. So they don't want you to, this happens very lot. So we get, we get into um, the titles. I was president. I was secretary, and then they just say that, and then nothing else. Well, what did you do? Um, not just that you can say that you were on the advisory board and 4-H council. What as a what in that role did you do to help the 4-H council? Say what you did, and not um, and what you learned, um, and not just those titles, things like that. Again, this is really common also with community service. You know, helped serve the food kitchen. Well, what did you learn? What happened as a result? Make sure to include that. And if you have any questions, um, contact our office. Um, that's about all I have on, on this presentation. Uh, but again, I know that doing these scholarships takes a lot of work, so feel free to contact us. Our phone number um, is 812-482-1782, and you can always send me an email, uh, jmonarch at purdue.edu. Thank you.